Okay. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Legend Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, did this remind you of the line in Endgame? And where did it lead you? Back to me. <laughs> That's where we're at. Brian, I don't mind Thanos if we're going back in time, but to bring him back through other means, although, Brian, we have to think about how we brought back the people that were snapped in the first place, right? Right. Thanos is not technically, you know, bad. So how they choose to go about bringing him back is interesting, but it can't be dumb. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It can't. But if they if they go that route, is is just is you can see the desperation. But we were supposed to get uh, certain uh, scenes with of a younger Thanos in Eternals that never made it to the yeah. to the screen. Uh, and I was certainly looking forward to seeing some of that. We never got a chance to see that. Uh, but if we go back in time, who knows the Xandar situation, how he gets that. Those are the situations that I'm looking forward for them to, 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 to bring back and for us to see Thanos and nothing. I don't think any more uh, involved in that. I agree. I think so. Josh Brolin was asked about this and, and there was got people talking. He said, quote, you know, I hear kind of like through the grapevine, they're thinking of bringing him back or that they're going to bring him back. Mm -hmm. and then he kind of goes on to say, like, to clarify, well, he's like, there's the what if series and that's a different kind of Thanos. He's like, but I don't know in the Marvel world if they would bring him back. Um, I tend to agree with you. I tend to think if this happens, it's not really he's being brought back. It's more that they're revisiting a time or a point in this timeline where he, where the events of Endgame and Infinity War have not yet occurred. Or it's some kind of alternate universe Thanos where it's not applicable. Remember, like he kind of he wasn't shown as a character. Remember in the in the alt universe in Doctor Strange 2, there's that shot which implies a different outcome to the battle in Endgame and Thanos' yeah. death is kind of shown there. Like, so that if they brought him back, brought him back, it's Palpatine too. I'm sorry. The Palpatine thing was so bad on so many levels, but the biggest thing about it to me that was sacrilegious was that it basically rendered Anakin Skywalker's sacrifice at the end of Return of the Jedi meaningless. Because yeah. he didn't actually destroy him. Yeah. And so if you actually bring back Thanos post Endgame, doesn't it render Tony Stark's sacrifice equally meaningless if it didn't actually stop anything? I just don't believe, like if Kevin Feige is out there publicly saying he would never bring back that version of RDJ, I can't believe he would then be like, oh, I'm cool bringing back that version of Josh Brolin's Thanos. No. So, although if they were, I think you actually forgot the, the most applicable part of that, that memorable quote, which is, you could not live with your own failure, which is exactly what Marvel would be doing. Yeah, this yo, this is, it's crazy. Or how the, the, oh my God. How it's just playing, how it's playing out like that. Uh, that. That cannot be a solution, though, to the to the Jonathan Major situation. You cannot revert no. this to like a Thanos saga, too. That cannot happen. There, there are theories out there that uh, Thanos' mission was also in uh, service of the the uh, of certain uh, planets because he knew what needed to be done in order to avoid Galactus. So there's that going around. So I'm, that's, that's interesting to understand his mission, his obsession to do what he thought needed to be done to avoid those catastrophes. But although he still also mentioned the, 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 the 
his grand reasoning is um, resources, right? Yeah. So I don't know how they're going to play with that. Uh, I'm more interested in them going back into the history of Thanos and him becoming who he was and how he thought as a younger version of himself. But again, Brian, we still have to understand that people that got snapped came back. So there isn't anything out there saying that he couldn't be snapped back. I mean, I see what you're saying. I just, I'd be pretty disappointed if that's a, if that's an outcome we have to deal with. I can, like I said, I can deal with Thanos elsewhere in the timeline because he obviously had other adventures and was critical to other comic storylines that we never got to see. I'm fine with that. Uh, like I said, I'm also fine with an alt universe Thanos. I can actually live with that because he went, he might have different motivations, different powers, different you know allies or enemies. I can live with that. I just I, I'm not okay with taking what happened in Endgame and then kind of saying like, "Aha, fooled you." There's there's actually a secret to that that we now want to tell. That that like I said, I would put him right on the shelf next to Palpatine, and I would be equally enraged at the Parliament as I was at Kathleen Kennedy for that. I'm interested, Brian, in what they're trying to do with uh, Kang. And I think this uh, Coleman, what's his name again? Coleman Domingo. Coleman Domingo. He looks like a very interesting replacement. Well, we don't know that that's happening. He just yes. hasn't ruled it out. And they have. Yes. Like said, I'm still not 100% convinced they know. You know, and I think you could argue Brolin's comment is hatched from a writer's room meeting saying, well, what if we did that? You know what I mean? Like Marvel's at this weird point where it almost feels like I can't tell if it's like there's too many leaks or it's just like there's too many false flags around like their projects now to where like we we hear about all these crazy ideas that like never really had a chance of becoming real anyway but someone in the writer's room brought it up because that's what you do in a writer's room. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like with every, there's, there's a lot of movies where if we did this exercise of like, what were all the things you considered for the script? I bet you would get some crazy stuff for some classic yeah. movie, right? And like, we never hear about it. But now with Marvel, because of the state they're in, the microscope is on them so much. I almost wonder like, are we hearing like the combination of extra false rumors and way too many leaks to where we're just, you know, hearing all the bad ideas before we get to the actual one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're sort of like testing the waters to see what's... Uh, yeah, a little bit. The tribal. Yeah, because tri yeah, yeah. it's interesting. That's an interesting point because I don't know if you saw the, the, the Camille Nanjani headlines that made some recently about him having a trauma and having to go into therapy because of Eternals, the backlash. Yeah. Listen, I mean, I uh, hope, hope he's okay. I'm sure he'll be okay. His career's going to be fine. To me... The most telling part of his comment was he said Marvel was so sure Eternals was going to be universally acclaimed that that's why they sent him and the cast on this huge worldwide promotional tour and released the movie at awards festivals. So similar to Quantumania, the people in the room thought they had a classic when they saw Eternals. And to me, when you are cons now consistently so far off the audience and critical reaction to your own projects, isn't that when the trial ballooning starts? Because you no longer are sure what the audience will like. So you start leaking things out early to just see what the feedback is. I think you're onto something with that. That this is like, somewhat of this is systematic because they're no longer, they no longer feel like they have their finger on the pulse of the audience. And, it's, and that's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. Because you have people out there that have some good ideas. Uh, they're out of touch. It's just they've lost it. They've lost it. They've lost their mojo. They, they're out of touch. It's just they've lost it. They've lost it. They've lost their mojo. They, 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 they I don't know. I just... I find it shocking that they thought both Eternals, I understand when they cast and set up Eternals, why they would have thought that it would be amazing. We yes. thought that too. Yes, we but did. Once they saw the final cut, 
how could they have thought that was going to be a movie that everyone would like and applaud? Same with Quantumania. When they saw the finished cut, how could they think that movie was going to be a massive, massive hit? Right. I can... Brian, there were certain elements of Eternals that were fantastic, that I thought were awesome. Some of the, the, the special effects, uh, some of the characters. I thought, I thought it was dope. Yeah. The story was a little bit all over the place, and you said it yourself in a, lo a long time ago, after I think when we first reviewed the movie, that um, there's a there's there's a great there's a great movie that that there in there somewhere. Yeah, the edit it got lost in the editing room. That was my opinion. yes, yes. Uh, and I can and, and Brian, it, it, the the buzz around Eternals was was really high, Brian, and this and and this was coming from these weren't. I don't think. I think there were people that really did like these, 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 th this movie, uh, but the general audience didn't really like it that much. Um, so I understand the sentiment of for uh, Eternals, having seen it myself, and I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was good. There was again. There was certain things that didn't that didn't go well. And again, we we talked about this in our review. But Quantum Mania, there's no excuse for for you to think that sitting through that movie that you said that this movie was dope. Like I wish I would have. You know how they, they give you tickets when you go to the theaters to go see a screening and you don't know what it is? Yeah. I wish I would have caught, caught that and I would have told, I would have, I would have had to make a special video or, or, to get it to Kevin Feige. Don't release Quantum Man. This movie's an atrocity. And then I would have been proven right so many months ago. And I thought this movie was going to be it. Because it yeah. has so much writing on it, right? They bet big on it. They moved it to the front of the yeah. line. They put, they put Kang's big screen introduction. There's a lot of things that are basically like beforehand they were putting the chips on this. And I'm fine with that. Again, it's similar to Eternals. But once you saw the finish, like again, was Eternals okay? Is it as bad as people? Probably not. But let's be straight. What Kumail Nanjani is telling you is they saw the finished cut and they thought this had a chance to be nominated for Oscars. Come on now. It ain't that. It's not that. And that's what I'm saying. There's a huge disconnect there between what we, what everyone else saw and what they thought they saw in the room. And that's concerning. And that's what makes me wonder, are we getting more of these story leaks put out to kind of pe for them to sort of see like, well, what, what are people hooking on to? What is going to trend if we put it out there? Would Eternals would have benefited from the appearance of a of a flashback of Thanos? No, no, because to me, to me, the biggest flaw in Eternals is that Gemma Chan and Richard Madden have no chemistry. No chemistry, yeah. That's it. Like you can't over if they're if they're your lead position as your lead characters and they don't work well together. That kind of ensemble movie to me doesn't work because we know Barry Keown's character and his his love interest have great chemistry. But they're like the fourth and fifth lead, right? So it's like yeah. you can't, you, you can't, you can't overcome that. You can't overcome yeah. that. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of them um, possibly bringing Thanos back. Uh, is it, does it look like desperation? It certainly does, from my perspective. Brian, I don't know about you. Is 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 it is it desperation bringing Thanos back? I mean, because we well, always was... heard, huh? <laughs> Josh Brolin would say, I am <laughs> He was just snapped. He wasn't actually, uh, or that version of Thanos wasn't actually killed. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be interesting to, 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 to see. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah.